consider the charges q q and minus q placed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle as shown in figure what is the force on each charge so here we have uh, force uh, we, here we have equilateral triangle and on this vertex a we have charge q on vertex b we have charge q and on vertex c we have charge minus q and it is asked to find the force on each of the charge so let's start with the force acting on charge at a so force acting on q1 at a and let us call that force as f1 so on this charge at a the force is acted by two other charges that is the charge at b which is also positive which will repel this charge along this direction that is b to a so the force on 1 by 2 it is along b to a similarly the other charge this charge is negative right so negative charge will attract this charge along this direction which is along a to c and the net force acting on charge at a that is on charge 1 is the vector sum of f12 and f13 f12 is the force acting on 1 f12 is the force acting on 1 due to 2 and f13 is the force acting on 1 due to 3 and the resultant is the vector sum of these two force so what is f12 so f12 is this force which is given by equation k q then q divided by l square so it is kq square by l square and let us assume that this force is equals to f and it is acting along b to a similarly the force f13 is along this direction a to c so it is given by k q q we will consider magnitude here only divided by l square so it is kq square by l square and let us assume that this force is also f and it is along a to c the negative sign of this force right which is used to find this direction okay now here these two forces are equal right and the angle between these two force this is f13 and this is f12 and here this angle is 60 because it is an equilateral triangle so this angle is 120 so if you have two vectors which are aligned at 120 degree and their magnitudes are same right then the resultant is also same so i have done here calculation we have vector 1 and vector 2 so it is a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so here this is our a this is our b and the angle between them is 120 so here f square plus f square f square plus f square plus 2 f square cos 120 cos 120 is minus 1 by 2 so 2 and 2 will get cancelled f square f square because this is negative right so we are remaining with f and which is nothing but kq square by l square now what is the direction of this force so here see this is f12 this is f13 on using parallelogram method the resultant force acting on 1 right is f1 the direction of f1 is obtained by parallelogram method okay and if you see this this force is parallel to this line okay it is parallel to line b c it is uh, right this force is f1 is along this direction so it is parallel to b c okay that what i have written here right so it is parallel to b c now let us try to find out the force acting on charge b right due to a and due to c right so the force acting on charge at b is first force is act by this one so these two are positive so force acting on 2 due to 1 is along this direction it is along a to b similarly force acting on 2 due to 3 is along this direction f 2 3 y because this is positive and this is negative right again the magnitude of these two forces are equal and the angle is 120 right see this is f 2 1 so it is k q square by l square this is also k q square by l square and the resultant is also k q square by l square see its calculation is same as we have done right before one or two minute okay so no need to worry about the same calculation is done here now what is how we will find the resultant we will find the resultant by using parallelogram method so the resultant of this uh, two forces is along this direction so f2 is the resultant of f21 and f23 and if you uh, see it properly right if you draw it properly then you will find that this f2 is parallel to ac these two are parallel to each other okay so this calculation i have done 
will show you. So similarly, F2 is equals to F21 plus F23 and the resultant is also F because both are same, both are equal and the angle between them is 120. So F2 is KQ square by L square, but it is parallel to AC. Now the force acting on charge at C. Now what is happening here? If we find force on charge at C, which is negative, then this negative charge will get attracted along this direction. Right, so it is k q square by l square because k q into q so q square by l square similarly this is positive and this is negative so this will get attracted along this direction so this is f 3 2 and this is f 3 1 this is force on 3 by 1 this is force on 3 by 2 right again these two forces are equal right so let us assume this force is f and this force is also f right but now the angle between these two force is nothing but 60 degree so here again we have two vectors here let us assume vector f another vector f right both are equal and the angle between them is 60 so we can use vector low okay so it is a square plus b square plus 2ab cos 60 so f square plus f square plus 2 f into f is f square and cos 60 is 1 by 2 so 2 2 get cancelled so it is uh, f square plus f square 2 to cancel so it is uh, 3 f square so it is under root uh, 3 f square so f square root will get cancelled so it is root 3 into f so our resultant force is root 3 f and what is f it is kq square by l square now what is the direction of this force it is perpendicular to a b right see uh, uh, this this is getting pulled in this direction right that, that is force f 3 1 and f 3 2 is acting in this direction so the resultant force by using parallelogram method will act in this direction which is perpendicular to this a b which is shown here right so it is perpendicular to a b right so we have calculated the force on each charge but in our textbook right uh, some extra things are done so we are doing that now it is interesting to see that the sum of the forces on this three charges is zero why c what we have uh, see in this question this is the force f1 right uh, so this is f1 which is nothing but f okay this is force f2 okay and which is nothing but f now if you try to trace their path if we try to trace their path if we try to trace the path of these forces right let us assume i'm tracing the path of this force here right so again tracing the path of this force here then what i what i will get here is these two forces are equal and they are aligned to each other at an angle 60 degree so this is f right this is also f and the angle between these two forces is 60 so the resultant of this two force is nothing if you try to find out you will get root 3 f along this direction okay so the resultant of this two force the resultant of this two force is root 3 f which is in the upward direction and the force acting on q3 right is also root 3 f but it is acting in the downward direction so this is root 3 f this is root 3 f they are equal and opposite hence the net force on the system is zero